Okay, blood plasma. Blood plasma is the extracellular matrix of the connective tissue blood. And as all matrices, there is ground substance and proteins. So, the ground substance in this case is mostly water. It's 92% water. I've said that in the last video and I'm saying it again. It's a number that you need to know. Now, when you're dehydrated, there is less water. When you are more hydrated, there is more water. About 1% is dissolved molecules and other ions, so sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, um, bicarbonate, things like that. There's lots of it, but it doesn't weigh very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's also the dissolved nutrients. So this would be things like amino acids and um, um, glucose, you know, the, um, the various fats, phospholipids and things that, um, that are in the blood uh, as nutrients. Uh, nucleic acids, for that matter, as well. 7% um, is made up of plasma proteins. And these plasma proteins are integral to the composition of plasma and how it works. It's entirely extracellular. Um, the proteins are what distinguish the uh, plasma from the interstitial fluid, the fluid between the cells in the tissues. Plasma tends to have higher concentrations of protein. Um, and therefore has an osmotic balance because of those, the, those concentrations of proteins. So this is a very nice table that sums it all up. 92% water. It's the solvent. It's what things uh, are dissolved in and it's what things are suspended in uh, for the uh, colloidal suspension that is blood. Blood is a colloidal mixture. It is, uh, it is also a uh, suspension with the, um, the formed elements. That's why you can centrifuge it. And it is a solvent. As a, uh, it's a solution with water acting as the solvent. So it's all three things at the same time, depending on what uh, element you're talking about. So the proteins, which are colloidally suspended, uh, 58 approximately, you know, not a bad figuring if you say someplace around 60%, but around 58% of it is albumin. And the albumin's job is to exert osmotic forces. It retains fluid within the blood. It's what draws fluid from the interstitial fluid loaded with waste products and brings it back to the blood to be distributed to the lungs and the um, and the kidneys, etc. It's a contributor to the viscosity of the blood um, and attached to albumin is some different lipids, some fatty acids, some of the hormones. So it's slightly responsible for transport, but it's not that's not its main function. Its main function is osmotic force. Albumin is made by the liver. If you don't have enough albumin, then you don't have enough osmotic pressure to bring liquid back from the interstitium into the blood. So what you end up with is edema. And you end up with edema everywhere, swelling everywhere, because you are not drawing the liquid from the interstitium back into the blood. If you have liver disease, you don't make enough albumin. Therefore, one of the very first symptoms of liver disease is systemic edema, swelling up everywhere. This is, I'm telling you this as a contextual thing.
to understand the context of this. Now, alba has, is the same word as albino, which means white or colorless. Um, and it is called that because it is the main protein in egg whites. So chicken eggs, the chicken's liver produces a lot of albumin that goes in the blood and ends up in the egg. So egg whites are almost pure albumin. Um, 37, almost 40% of the plasma proteins are the globulins. Now, uh, the globulins are just globular proteins that have various functions. The alpha globulins are used in transporting uh, lipids primarily. The beta globulins uh, transport iron. Uh, and some lipids. The gamma globulins are the antibodies, and this is important. So uh, the gamma globulins are literally the extracellular proteins produced by plasma cells in response to um, an attack of pathogens. So when you have an infection, say the COVID infection or something, uh, then your body will react to to protect you by increasing the amount of gamma globulin uh, antibodies that are specifically targeting that virus. Blood carries with it its uh, an ability to clot to prevent blood loss, and fibrinogen is the um, is the protein involved with that. It makes up about four percent of uh, the plasma proteins. Now, anytime you see a protein named with the suffix gen, G-E-N, it means that it is in an inactive form. Gen means it, it will generate or genesis the, the beginning. Fibrinogen is an inactive form of the clotting protein. It's a globular protein that is constantly available in the blood. When circumstances are right, there is um, a series of enzymatic reactions that we'll talk about in a, in a further video uh, that causes fibrinogen to become fibrin. When it becomes fibrin, that's a, um, a fibrous protein that gets all tangled up and causes the blood the blood to clot. So, and again, anytime you see gen, it means it's inactive. So, pepsinogen in the stomach is the inactive form of pepsin. It will be a recurring theme uh, through the rest of this semester. Less than 1% of the plasma proteins are regulatory proteins, read enzymes. Some of them are hormones, um, but most of them are enzymes. In solution, we have the electrolytes, uh, which are really um, dissociated salts, acids, and bases. So bicarbonate, hydrogen ions, sodium ions. These are all the ions. The various nutrients. Um, the respiratory gases, mostly it's oxygen uh, and carbon dioxide. Uh, we will talk about the proportions of that later. And the very various waste products, so uh, creatinine, urea, bilirubin, ammonia. Um, those are the metabolic wastes that get distributed to the lungs to breathe them away or to the kidneys so that you can piss them away. So blood, as I said, is a colloid uh, of the proteins. I'm not going to spend much time on this, uh, but the proteins are almost entirely produced in the liver. Albumin, fibrinogen, a lot of the enzymes uh, are made in the, the liver. The 
globulins, some of them are made in the liver. The vast majority, the gamma globulins, are made in the blood itself by the white blood cells, by plasma cells. The colloid osmotic pressure is the the pressure because of those proteins as a colloid solution. Um, so they prevent a loss of fluid uh, from the blood as it goes through the capillaries. It maintains blood volume and maintains blood pressure. So like I said, liver diseases decrease the production of those proteins and uh, you will end up with tissue swelling edema. Kidney diseases that where you are losing those proteins uh, in your urine, so you have proteinuria, will also cause generalized edema because of this colloidal osmotic pressure. Albumin, egg white, someplace around 58%. Globulins, we've gone over all of this, fibrinogen and the regulatory proteins. So, I'll let you uh, look at this. Will blood be able to be properly carry out its functions if the pH is altered? Why or why not? What are the main dissolved substances found in plasma? I will answer these questions in our WebEx meeting on Tuesday. So, as a solution, in the plasma, there's the organic and inorganic molecules in the ions, the, the nutrients, etc. One of the things that you have to remember is that the hydrophilic things, which are polar, have a charge and dissolve easily in the po polar medium of water. Nonpolar things tend to be hydrophobic and will not dissolve. So all of the nonpolar things like um, fats, etc., uh, the fat-based hormones and things, they all need proteins as carriers uh, because they will not dissolve directly in the plasma. We will end this video here and pick up for the formed elements in the next video.